What's up YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again and today we are checking out the iJoy Captain PD270 as recommended by Relic Vapor. So stay tuned. That is right YouTube. Today we are checking out the iJoy Captain PD270. That is a mouthful to say so going forward I'm just going to call it the iJoy Captain. I feel like that's pretty fair. Before we get started in this review, I do want to mention that this was actually bought by me with my own money. This was not sent to me for review. This was not a sponsorship. Um, yes, iJoy sent me products in the past, but they are in no way affili affiliated with this review in any way other than the fact that it's an iJoy product that I bought with my own money. And in all fairness, I didn't just buy one. I actually bought two. I had a black one before the rainbow one. When the rainbow one came out, I traded the black one away and bought another one, this time the rainbow or the neochrome type color. Uh, speaking of colors, it does come in three different types of colors. You have your black, your rainbow, and a gunmetal one as well. Uh, personally, I love the rainbow one, but there's kind of a really nice gunmetal color too. It's a bit more subtle, definitely more of a darker gray. Very, very similar to the black one in my opinion, just a little bit lighter. But uh, honestly, all three colors are really nice. And, you know, there are some selections for the skins as well. If you want to go check them out, they're on iJoy's website. There's like reds, blues, I think there's like greens and stuff like that. There's like snake skin or whatever. Um, really cool combinations. Personally, I like the carbon fiber with the rainbow, but that's just me. Anyways, let's kick this review off with the actual unboxing. We're gonna do an unboxing real quick first. And what we'll do is open up the box right now. So we slide off the sleeve, we take out the box, and we are greeted right away with this beautiful rainbow or neochrome iJoy Captain. As we flip it over to the back, you have almost like this abstract art or like a, almost like a Stabwood-esque feel to this kind of border around the captain or to the plate behind the captain. Really cool coloring, goes well with the rainbow in my opinion. That's what kind of drew me to this was just that one logo. I love the way that looks, really classy and uh, kind of different from most mods. So we'll put that aside for now. Let's dig a little deeper down in the box. And uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is this USB cable, which is actually a firmware and a charge cable. Although I will say this, I really recommend charging any of your devices or any of your batteries with an actual battery charger, an external charger. I think it's worth the investment. They're honestly between like 20 and 40 bucks, depending on the brand, depending on what make it is, and of course, depending on how many battery slots it can fit. But uh, you can pick them up for like 40 bucks, and it is a very good investment um, if you ask me. Further down, we also have this blue thing. And while this looks like a case for your batteries, it's actually an adapter for 18650 batteries. Now, if you don't know this, the iJoy Captain PD270 is actually a mod that uses the new 2700 batteries, which you can see kind of further below, which we'll talk about in just a second. But it does have the option to use 18650s as well if you wanted to. So you have a set of a married set of 18650s kicking around, and you want to use them as spares, you definitely can. Um, but also included in the box is the 2700s. So we'll talk about those next. And uh, 2700s with these batteries, they are 40 amps and 3000 milliamp hours. But these batteries they come with are the 2700s. They are iJoy's, I guess, free wrap version of them. I don't know the original manufacturer of these, to be honest with you. I want to say these were actually made by Tesla, if I'm not mistaken, to replace the 18650s using their engine motors or in, in their uh, hybrid motors, but I could be wrong. Um, but anyways, so going back to it, like I said, 3000 milliamp hours, 40 amps, perfect combination. Um, however, I will say that I use 18650s, or for my 18650s that I use, I use the LG HG2s or the LG Browns, which are of course 3000 milliamp hours as well. Yes, they have a lower amperage, but for battery life, don't expect to be a huge difference between these 2700s and the LG Browns that we're running right now. In fact, for my battery test on this, I actually got almost the exact same result with both batteries. Um, for the LG HG2s, I had around 10 hours of battery life, and I actually decided to do a puff counter on this one for both of them to kind of measure it up to be a little more precise and both of them were almost dead on 170 puffs from full battery life to needing to be charged so there's no real benefit as far as you know battery life goes for these 2700s compared to the lg hg2s but my thought process is that the biggest difference might be the amperage on these the 40 amps because the lg hg2s if I'm not mistaken are only 20 amp batteries so you have double the amperage with the same amount of milliamp hours that might come in play in the higher wattages, which, which we'll actually test out later on in this video. Getting through the unboxing, we're all done with that. So that's what you get in there. You get a warranty card and then you also get the user manual as well. But that's kind of what I want to talk about in the unboxing section. 
Next thing I want to talk about is, uh, is actually the craftsmanship of this device and particularly the paint coloring. Um, yes, I love this rainbow paint coloring, but the question is, will it hold up over time? Because we all know that a mod looks pretty when it's brand new, but a month down the road, they typically end up having dings, scratches, paint chips, things like that. And so far, this one has held up pretty nicely. The rainbow one is only about three weeks old now, so it's still relatively new, but I have dropped it a couple times and I've been pretty rough with it, just throwing it in my backpack kind of thing, just with a bunch of my other mods. So it gets thrown around, tossed around a little bit, and honestly, it's held up really nicely. Some of my other mods, on the other hand, have not held up so well, with the paint in particular. So it's gonna be interesting to see if this one maintains that really nice paint coating two or three months down the road. But again, the black one I had before that, same thing, no paint chips or anything, treated it pretty roughly. And uh, again, I had that one for about a month or so before I got this one. So it all really depends on the long term, but the short term so far has been an improvement over some of the other mods I have seen and have reviewed in the past. All right, so next thing I wanna talk about is actually what's on the screen itself. There's a bunch of information on there. What does it all mean? What does it all relate to? Well, as we can see here, we have the wattage as the uh, big number right there with the big W. We also have independent battery cell levels so you can see the actual independent charge of each battery. We have the resistance, which is at a 0.1 right now. We also have the amperage it's putting out, the mode, which actually is the kind of soft, hard, or normal mode. So harder in hard mode is gonna hit a little bit harder at the beginning and then kind of cool off at the end. Soft's gonna start out soft beginning and kind of ramp up to the regular wattage. And of course, normal mode is just con a consistent hit. Um, I'm using hard mode right now, I prefer that. But uh, honestly, you'll find your own preference from there in the menu system, which we'll talk about in just a moment here. Further to that, you also have the voltage on here, you also have the puff counter, and then you also have the actual puff duration. Moving on to the actual menu system, one thing I love about this is the simplicity of the menu system. To get into the menu system, it's a very simple three clicks, one, two, three. We have the power wattage, we'll select that. You have, again, normal, hard, or soft. And then you also have the user preference. In the user preference, you can select kind of your scale of the actual puff, so you can start out strong and end weak or you can start out weak and ramp up to a stronger one, or like me, you can just keep it consistent and just kind of go from there. Once we get out of that, we can go to exit. One, two, three. We'll go to TC. TC is your temp control mode. You have nickel, titanium, stainless steel. You have your mode one, mode two, et cetera. And of course, exit. We'll go back into exit. Uh, you'll save your TCR mode. I'm not gonna go into that, but if you wanna set your own temperature control for the metal. And getting back into the menu system. We also have the set, this is to set the screen time before it times out. You have 10 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, 90 seconds, and you can do all that good stuff, uh, and 60 seconds, I should say, as well. Going back to the menu system, the last one we wanna talk about is the reset puff counter. So if you wanna reset your puff counter, you just hit reset puff, and it resets your puff counter for you. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the menu system in general, so a pretty neat menu, very easy to use, very easy to navigate. Again, big thumbs up for that. Um, honestly, there's not a lot to go wrong with this device. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about before we get to the actual test on this is the actual price. And the price in Canadian is between 80 and $90 Canadian, and that is for the whole kit. That includes the two 2700 batteries. So a really nice price point at that point. And uh, US, it tends to be between 60 and $70 is where I found it around, uh, give or take. But again, that's for the whole kit as well, and that includes the two 2700 batteries just to kind of kick things off as well, so you have both options there. Um, honestly, and overall, overall, it's a really good value for that price point, and the fact they include the two batteries with that is a huge plus in my books, and it's just, it screams value, guys. All right, so looking at the test side by side, on the left-hand side, we see the 2700s, and on the right-hand side, we see 18650s. On both these, we're both set to 234 watts, the maximum wattage on this device, to try and see if the actual higher amperage made a difference at that higher wattage. And based on the test, as we can see here, it actually looks like they're performing very well and very much so at the same pace kind of thing, which kind of surprised me to be honest. I was expecting the 2700s to perform better at the high wattage because that higher amperage they have. But as you can see, the 18650 if may have even performed better than the 2700s, which was a bit of a shock to me. So after I did that test, I actually did a vape test where I vaped them each individually. I didn't record it on camera because honestly you saw the test right there and the cotton was pretty burnt after that test so it wasn't a pleasant experience. 
Um, but I couldn't really tell the difference between the 2700s and the 18650s at the 234 watts. I think where those 2700s are really going to shine with that 40 amp um, rating on them, which is a 40 amp continuous rating, not pulse rating. Uh, I think they're going to shine like mechanical mods that you're seeing coming out now. And there are a few that have come out that do take the 2700s. So I think having that 3000 million power, that long lasting life, plus the 40 amps to add for the protection for the lower builds, I think that's really where you're going to see those batteries shine in particular. But overall, am I disappointed with the battery? Absolutely not. Like I said, battery life is about the same. I'm not losing anything with them. I'm just not gaining anything with them either. But for the price point that this whole kit is at for like 80 bucks Canadian, it's really tough to go wrong with them at that price, honestly. You get the batteries included anyways. You may as well take them when you get them. And like I said, there's going to be a ton more 2700 battery mods coming out in the future. So I think that you're going to see a lot more stuff embracing this, this technology. I really do think that's where vaping is going in general. So now we've gone through many settings, the overall screen layout, the test as far as the 18650s versus the 2700s at the high wattage. We've pretty much talked about everything I wanted to talk about in this review, so I wanted to keep it short like I said. So now I'm just going to end with my final thoughts and whether or not I recommend this. First things first, I did buy this with my own money twice, so that should be a pretty good indication that I actually really enjoy this device. I've had nothing but good experiences with it, I haven't had any issues. Nothing like that, but again, I don't charge for the device, so I don't know if that may cause issues down the road or maybe even immediately. I never do that because I just don't recommend doing it. And, you know, honestly, if you buy a device and you're charging it through the device and the device bricks out or breaks um, or the chip overheats or something like that happens, I gotta be honest, I can't really fault, uh, well, maybe I can fault the manufacturer a little bit. I will say it does say on their website that it does have a charge cable or it does treat the cable as a charge and upgrade cable. So they're almost encouraging it. I would hope that if it does charge for the cable, it is balanced charging and you're not going to ruin your batteries or have one battery charging faster than the other. So it kind of unmarries them. That's obviously the, the less than ideal situation that could occur. But if you have a battery charger, use that, please. Uh, speaking of which, the 2700s definitely fit in the eFest Luke six bay charger, which is what I use. I have about a millimeter of play in there. With the night cores, it's really, really tight. You may have like half a millimeter of play. It's really, really tight in there. I, I don't know if I even recommend using that, if that is the battery charger you're using for those 2700s. Um, I don't know any other battery chargers that will work with them. I only have experience with two types of battery chargers, the night core and the EFS Luke V6. The Luke V6 out of the two is by far my more preferred one. It feels like there's a lot more room in there, so that's where I would recommend going. All in all, yes, I recommend this device. Um, like I said, I've bought two of them with my own money, so it's not like these were sent to me. Um, although I will say this, iJoy has sent me products in the past. They are not affiliated with this review in any way other than the fact that it's their product I'm reviewing. iJoy, you've impressed me a lot. I mean, I'm going to recommend the captain, of course, and uh, keep up the good work. And in the meantime, guys, hope this review was helpful. You know, if it was, let me know in the comments below. If it wasn't, you know, what, what did I miss? What would you like to see in this video that maybe wasn't in here? Uh, obviously, I want to work my reviews more. I want to make sure that you guys are happy with what you're seeing. And, you know, you're the ones who end up watching in the end. So it's up to you what you want to see in a review. If I'm missing something, let me know, let me know down below. And I will definitely tweak my next review to make it better. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, YouTube, happy vaping.